let's talk about what's hip right now. TikTok, breweries, and hating on Star Wars. That's right. If you want to be cool, you have to hate everything new related to Star Wars that comes out. And don't you dare say you like the sequel trilogy. That's blasphemy. Alright, I'm of course joking. I love all things Star Wars. I even like the silly prequel trilogy because it's fun for me. The problem is that a fandom that used to be so much fun has become toxic, negative, and mired in cynicism. Now, I've made it pretty clear on this show that I don't think there's any reason for film critics to exist. Their only purpose is to make people feel bad or unintelligent for enjoying something that they've decided isn't worthy of our entertainment. Critics are the lowest form of life on Earth. You know that saying, those who can't do, teach? Well, it could be expanded upon by saying, those who can't make movies, criticize movies. Let's take a look at some of the complaints about Star Wars, shall we? First, I'd like to talk about the most recent Disney Plus show, The Book of Boba Fett. In an article for The Guardian, wannabe journalist and all-around hack Chris Edwards gives us the title, Boba Fett is Dead. How Disney Plus Ruined Star Wars' Coolest Character. In this article, clearly written by a sad, attention-starved narcissist, he starts by saying, In the book of Boba Fett, the once menacing freelancer has become a softy with a heart of gold. He has relinquished his title as a bounty hunter, become so curiously forgiven that he actually set free a Wookiee assassin just moments after it tried to murder him in his sleep stroked a rancor behind its ear as if it were his oversized house cat, and called a Tusken Raider mate. He then continues, Within minutes he was fighting for the light side for the very first time, having inexplicably been repositioned as a good guy, or a guy with a moral compass at least. Whatever he is now, he's unrecognizable from the character that once fascinated Star Wars fans. Wow, how does this guy know so much about Boba Fett? Was it the three lines he had in the original trilogy? Or maybe it was the three minutes of screen time he had? Or could it be his backstory in the prequels that he's the child of a clone? I don't know. Let's face it, all we really know about Boba Fett is that he was a bounty hunter. We didn't know that he was merciless. We didn't know that he didn't have a moral compass, and we certainly weren't clear on his intentions. The funniest part about this article is that the writer goes on to admit this immediately by saying, What originally made Boba Fett the most interesting and mysterious character in the franchise was the fact that we knew absolutely nothing about him. Back then, he was just this cool armored bloke who stood on the side looking hard. Okay, Chris, you just canceled out everything you said in your first few paragraphs. All these things that you supposedly know about Boba Fett, and then you say we know absolutely nothing about him. I'm actually impressed that you contradict yourself this quickly in your crappy article. As for me, I think the book of Boba Fett is pretty cool, and I think it's pretty early to judge since we haven't seen the full story yet. This Chris guy clearly just wants attention, and sadly, he got it. Even from me. I just don't think being critical is a very good thing. People use it so they can feel superior to others. Hey bro, your pizza's here. Oh, my pizza's here? Well, good. I only ordered it two hours ago. What, you know, what kind of a grown man has a job as a pizza delivery boy? I bet you live in your parents' basement too, don't you? You know what, do me a favor, stay in the basement, never come out, and then none of us will ever have to see your disgusting face again. Why do you have to be so mean? Anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah, hypercritical people are the worst. You just gotta stay on the positive side of things. Okay, let's look at the next complaint about Star Wars. A lot of people had similar things to say about Luke Skywalker's treatment in The Last Jedi. 
a film that I personally regard as one of the finest in the series. Cinema Blend put together a nice article sharing both sides of the argument. For the purpose of this video, I'll just add the criticism fans had about Luke. We always wanted to see Luke in his prime Jedi form, using his powers to the fullest and fighting for the New Republic. Instead, in The Last Jedi, we got a cynical old hermit who despised the Jedi and wanted nothing to do with Rey and the Resistance fight against the First Order. Plus, when Luke Skywalker does fight Kylo Ren in the end, he's only an astral projection, and using that Force ability ends up killing him. There was so much buildup to Luke's appearance in The Force Awakens, and all we got was a cranky old wizard that eventually dies. We were ripped off. Okay, this argument is asinine. Not as asinine as Chris's article, I grant you, but asinine nonetheless. We're just supposed to believe that Luke Skywalker reached this pinnacle of power and never had any frustrations? I mean, he's supposed to be a human character, right? Struggles are part of the human condition. And as for that astral projection part, I still get chills when I watch that. He's literally projecting himself onto a battlefield and fighting another Jedi. That shows that he has a lot of power, if you ask me. It seems like most criticism for Star Wars recently is that people don't like character development. They just want everything to stay the same and they never want anything to progress. It's like saying, wow, that movie wasn't exactly what I thought it was, so I hate it. You know, it's funny that you should ask that because, yes, I, I am a Jedi Knight. I can move things with my mind. And I think another issue is that people are just romanticizing the original trilogy a little too much. They think Star Wars used to be this high level of art. Is that true? No, of course not. Star Wars is supposed to be fun. It's a swashbuckling adventure in space. Why don't you just worry about what you like and drown out the naysayers? I mean, that's a good point, but why do these critics and fanboys always watch these movies if they hate them so much? Shouldn't they just ignore them? It seems like a waste of time to me. Maybe because writing about how much you hate Star Wars gains you a following from toxic fanboys. Well, yeah, so much for avoiding cynicism. Besides, there's only one movie franchise worth devoting your entire life to. And it's not Star Wars, it's Children of the Corn.